Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. And here's your news now. Cabrini College held events last week commemorating the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Let's check in with Greg and see what Cabrini did to honor the anniversary. September 11th, 2011. Ten years after the tragic event of 9-11, Cabrini College, along with the rest of the world, will never forget. Cabrini College held a fence on campus to commemorate that tragic day. At the chapel, a prayer service was held where students, faculty, and the community gathered to show their strength. After the prayer service, everyone gathered around the Peace Bowl in a candlelight vigil to commemorate 9-11. Finishing the night of activities, students gathered in East Res Lounge to watch the movie World Trade Center. For Location, I'm Greg Stevens. President Obama sent his jobs bill to Congress and urged passage immediately, but many members of the House are weary of the bill since it resembles the 2009 stimulus package. Congress is set to work on a compromise bill that would be paid for without raising taxes, something President Obama's bill required. With billions in federal investment, the Green Jobs Initiative is failing to gain steam in the weak American economy. The green job sector is based largely on solar, wind, and other renewable resources. Spain and other European countries have embraced the green jobs, but found higher than expected costs and little to no payoff. Solyndra, a California-based solar energy company, filed for bankruptcy last week after receiving $535 million from the federal stimulus package only two years ago. The company's factory closed, eliminating more than 900 jobs. The U.S. Census Bureau annual report released Tuesday stated that the overall poverty level in the United States climbed over 15 percent. The official poverty level for a family of four is an annual income of $22,000. Over 46 million Americans live in poverty and the U.S. ranks near the bottom of developed countries living with people in poverty. And now to Liz with your local stories from around the block. Thanks, Holly. Last week, SEAL invited everyone to come out to the involvement fair. Let's check with Jimmy and see what happened. Students gathered in Grace Hall recently for Cabrini's annual involvement fair hosted by SEAL. The fair showcased many of the various clubs and organizations available for students to join such as Active Minds, Student Diversity, Green Team, Not For Sale Love 146, and many more. Let's hear from a few of the clubs and see what they're all about. Active Minds is a national organization. There are chapters on 100 college campuses, and uh, we basically try to promote uh, awareness about mental health. We uh, have resources about mental health, and uh, we try to reduce the stigma surrounding mental illness to make it easier to get help. To try to eliminate stigma, we're going to have like uh, Inside Out Day and Outside the Office Day. Uh, last year, we also had a big concert uh, for Tourette Love and Arms, where we tried to promote uh, suicide awareness. We had a couple local musicians play. We had people tell their personal stories. So we have we have a lot of events. Definitely like our Facebook page. Enjoy. Well, we promote a campus of community and respect of diversity. So we celebrate like coming out month, um, day of silence. We celebrate Black History Month. We celebrate Hispanic. among the community about sustainability issues. So one of our big projects that we're working on right now is the St. Francis Pledge to Care for Creation and the Poor. This is a five-step pledge, pledging to pray, learn, assess, act, and advocate to stop global warming. So we're also planning a fabulous event in January. Um, we're going to be participating in Recycle Mania, which is a nationwide competition among colleges and universities taking off. A uh, senior um, sociology and psychology major, Danielle DiPortolo, created this club. She's busy at another table representing other clubs right now. 
But basically, she got to go to the Not For Sale Academy in California, where she learned how to um, identify um, people who are victims of human trafficking. And when she came back here, she wanted to make her own Not For Sale club on campus. That's a good. Along with the many ways to get involved on campus, Seal had Snakes Alive come to the fair. Those who were brave enough held some of the reptiles and amphibians on display. For location, I'm Jimmy Kroll. Schools are out in Philadelphia as the Archdiocese has closed 17 Catholic schools following a breakdown in negotiations with its teachers. Representatives of the Archdiocese and teachers have been meeting since last week and have failed to reach an agreement. Union leaders stated that they will urge teachers to stay in the classroom if a mediator is brought in and assure that the mediator's suggestions are non-binding. A federal district judge in Harrisburg has ruled against the health care mandate, calling it unconstitutional. Federal Judge Christopher C. Connor said the power to regulate interstate commerce does not give the federal government power to make individual citizens purchase products against their will. This is one of 30 lawsuits against Obama's health care plan. The matter will likely be settled by the United States Supreme Court. There was closure for some relatives when the unidentified remains of those killed on United Flight 93 were finally put to rest in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The remains were held in a crypt for 10 years before they were laid to rest during a private ceremony at the rechristened Flight 93 Memorial. The passengers and flight crew of Flight 93 died trying to overcome hijackers on 9-11. Now let's go to Jimmy for our tech update. Jimmy, we heard that one of the World Trade Centers is being rebuilt again. Can you tell us more about it? That's right, Liz. The construction of One World Trade Center in New York is ushering in high-tech features to how nations build skyscrapers. The 1,776-foot-tall tower encompasses everything investigators and architects learned from the collapse of the World Trade Center's Twin Towers 10 years ago. Widened staircases that will allow for quick evacuation and improved sprinkler systems are two of the many safety features that are being built in this construction project in New York City and around the world. The One World Trade Center tower is being scheduled to be completed by 2013. FBI investigators are now investigating the hacking of NBC News' Twitter account late last week. Committed by perpetrators calling themselves the Script Kitties, the group posted false tweets about the hijacking of a commercial airline that supposedly crashed into the 9-11 memorial in New York City. Over the summer, the same hacker group took credit for an attack of the, on the Fox News Twitter account where false information was posed about a fatal shooting of President Obama. The, Fed, the FBI said they are still gathering information from NBC and declined to discuss any suspects. Carol Bartz is out as Yahoo's CEO. Yahoo chairman Roy Blorstock called Bartz on her cell phone to tell her the news that she had been fired as company CEO. In a profanity-laced interview with Fortune magazine, Bartz claimed at one point she thought the Yahoo chairman was classier. Timothy Morris was named as interim CEO of Yahoo following Bartz's departure. That's all I have this week. I will be sure to stay plugged into the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's head over to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Holly. Last week, I gave you a tip on how to watch your spending. This week, I want to touch on the importance of credit and debit card safety and online banking. Most banks have an online banking system that they encourage you to join in order to avoid paper fees. Online banking can be done anytime and you can even access your accounts on your smartphone. All of your banking statements are available in your online account as well as canceled checks. It is important to keep up with all transactions as to be sure there are no surprise charges. The sooner you see a questionable charge and contact your bank, the sooner you will be able to correct the problem. If you have a credit card and debit card, really think before you make an online purchase and give out your information. Always consider what website you're using and never give out your account information over the phone. Also, be careful what computer you're using when shopping online. You may be tempted to shop during that study break in the library, but it's much safer to shop at home where you know exactly what is installed on that computer and who uses it. Lastly, if you're planning to take a trip outside of the country or you're planning to study abroad for a semester, be sure to notify your bank with the start and end date of your trip. If you don't notify your bank, your credit or debit card transactions may not go through. Your bank will most likely assume your information was stolen. And that's your tip of the week. Back to you, Holly and Liz. Thanks, Danielle. And now for This Week in History. This week in 1814, Francis Scott Key penned the poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry. The poem was later set to music, and we now know it as the Star Spangled Banner. The song was adopted as the national anthem in 1931. 
On September 18, 1793, George Washington laid the cornerstone of the United States Capitol. The building took over a century to complete after the British set fire to it, as well as its use during the Civil War. Today, the Capitol is visited by over 3 million people and covers the ground area of about 4 acres. On September 19, 1957, the first underground nuclear explosion was detonated at the Nevada Test Site 65 miles north of Las Vegas. The test, known as Rainier, was fully contained and released no radioactive fallout. It was in 1941 when the government committed to building the first nuclear weapon, now known as the Manhattan Project. Now it's time for your up-to-date coverage of your Cabrini Cavs. Here is Mary Kate for Cabrini Sports Talk. The Cabrini women's tennis team claimed their fourth win on Monday versus Rutgers Camden with a score of 9-0. Sophomore Katie Kennedy was named CSAC Women's Tennis Player of the Week. This past Sunday, the Cabrini women's soccer team took home a win versus Sales 2-0. Student Athlete of the Week was awarded to goalkeeper Maddie Edwards. She recorded 18 saves and has not given up a goal the first 200 minutes of the Lady Cavs season. The Philadelphia Eagles beat the Rams 31-13 in the season opener Sunday, September 11th in St. Louis. The Cabrini College campus is surrounded with fans from all different teams. Week 2 for the Eagles begin on Sunday, September 18th versus the Falcons at 8.20. Thanks, Mary Kate. And now let's head over to Melissa for your most recent entertainment news. Hey guys, I am Melissa Webb with your entertainment news. Kate plus eight gets the boot. Kate Goslin is a little frightened by the thought of being unemployed after seven years of doing the show that was originally John and Kate plus eight. According to an interview with Matt Lauer on the Today Show, Kate says, the best opportunity for all of us would be for me to continue to work and TV as a way to provide for my family. The series will end by looking back at some of the family's favorite memories and hitting its 150 episode mark. Is there a competition between Kristen Stewart and Lily Collins? Well, Lily Collins is playing the role of Snow White in an upcoming film, Abduction. And Kristen will play a very similar role in another upcoming film, Snow White and the Huntsman. Which movie will do better is what everyone is dying to know. But for all you Twilight fans, check out the trailer for Breaking Dawn, which will hit theaters November 16th. Mary Fickett is a star from All My Children, died at the age of 83 due to health issues. She was famous for her role as Ruth Brent, and in 1973, she was the first soap star to receive Emmy Award for Outstanding Achievement. Speaking of the Emmy Awards, this Sunday, September 18th, check out the 63rd Annual Primetime Emmy Awards hosted by actress Jane Lynch and tune in next time to see what some of the Cabrini students have to say about the show. I am Melissa Webb and you've just been entertained. Thanks for tuning in to Location. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. We'll see you next time.